Hello there my fellow Holotable Heroes and welcome to part 3 of my road trip from UK to Croatia. If you haven't seen part 2 and part 1 yet, there will be a link in the description below so you can go ahead and check them out. So after spending a couple of days with my parents in Slovenia, I'm ready to continue my trip to the final destination which is a ball on island of Brač in Croatia. It's about 10 o'clock in the morning, so I reckon I'll arrive there at around 7 or so because there's a ferry ride in between and so on. But hey, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, so the total length of today's trip is just over 600 kilometers according to Google Maps. We'll see how much will be in the end. Now I'll try to make it just with one charging stop. Uh, if I can make it to Zadar, which is about 400 kilometers uh, from where I am at the moment, there's an Ionity charging station there. Well, also worth mentioning that obviously my car is 100% charged. I just charge it at my parents' house. Now, they don't have a dedicated uh, car charger, so I just plugged in into a socket that they have here outside, just a standard home socket. And obviously, you probably know it takes a while because it was only pulling 2 kilowatts, so it took like a day and a half uh, for the car to charge up back to 100%. But it's okay. I was here for, I think, two or three days, so I had plenty of time to charge up and ready to go. At least it's free to charge for me, so I'm not going to complain about that. And welcome to Croatia. Now, uh, to my surprise, there are actually no more border as well between Slovenia and Croatia. Well, no more border checks. So I was wrong about that. So it looks like in January this year when Croatia switched to Euro, they also joined the Schengen area. So there's actually no border checks as well here. So that was uh, obviously welcome sight because sometimes can be a bit of a queue because uh, obviously lots of people going to Croatian seaside. So there you go. Uh, the last, the only border check we had was when leaving England into the France, and then since then just drive through, like you know, it, there, there, it's all one big uh, country, which is really good. And also another welcome to Croatia is a uh, toll. You have to pay the toll. Uh, obviously, they do not have system like uh, we had in Austria and Slovenia, where you buy vineta. Here, you pay. The more you drive, the more you pay. Uh, so here, we just have to take the ticket. And then once we get to Zagreb, uh, we'll have to pay whatever we'll have to pay. Okay, let's just to slow down now. Get out a ticket. I will kindly ask Mrs. Beat Dynasty to take the ticket out. There we go, we got a ticket, so whenever we get to the next station, you just hand the ticket over to the machine and then it shows you how much you have to pay. So yeah, um, it's good to have uh, somebody with you if you're driving from UK because obviously the steering wheel is on the other side of the car because uh, in UK we drive on the left hand side where the rest of the Europe on the right hand side. Uh, that's why whenever we get through these booths and stuff, uh, I ask Mrs. B Dynasty to do the honors. Uh, to get those tickets done. All right, let's continue the journey throughout Croatia. Um, so far, I think we it's looking like we might make it to Zadar. We'll see. Car first said, yeah, you can make it. Then after five minutes, the car said, oh, no, no, you can't make it to Zadar. You'll have to charge for five minutes on one charger earlier to get to Zadar. But uh, at the moment, I think looks like we will be able to make it. I guess we'll have to wait and see. 
uh, in terms of the road conditions throughout the rest of Croatia. But for now, let's continue the journey. Okay, so we're coming to the first toll station, so this is where we'll see how much we had to pay. So we just covered about 50 kilometers since we entered Croatia, so we are approaching Zagreb now. Yeah, so this first toll was 6.7 euros, so obviously this was quite a short journey, uh, so once we reach the other side of Zagreb will go to the will switch to the motorway uh, towards the south towards the coast obviously I'll keep you updated guys but for now let's just continue driving So yeah, we just drove by a sign uh, promoting Nikola Tesla Memorial Center. Uh, yeah, in case you haven't known that actually Nikola Tesla, uh, he was born uh, in what's present day Croatia back in Austro-Hungarian Empire in 19th century. So speaking of Tesla, there's one just driving by me. Looks like a Model Y to me. Alright, not sure if you can see it on the camera, but we just had our first glimpse of the Adriatic Sea, which is very nice. So we just came out of a series of tunnels dug uh, in through the mountains and just going downhill, uh, regenerating obviously lots of uh, electricity back. Uh, I've, I've covered about 10 miles and I'm still on 21% of battery just because we keep going downhill. So we'll definitely make it to Zadar without any issues whatsoever. We Looks like plenty of range, range to spare still. Welcome to the country of 1244 islands and more than 100 little stores. There you go, fun fact for today. And I've got another one. Welcome to the country of 8 national parks and over 100 little stores. There you go, another fun fact for you. Little taking over Croatia, it seems. Okay, so we just got off uh, motorway to go to the charging stop uh, near Zadar. So we paid 16 euros and 50 cents uh, from Zagreb to Zadar. So it looks like we just got about five minute drive now uh, to the charging stops. Definitely seems like similar like uh, in uh, Brussels as well, it was slightly off motorway. So you do lose a little bit of a journey time here, obviously compared to diesel or petrol car. Uh, but you know, we'll just keep going and I'll let you know once we get there.
Okay, so it was a bit of a work around drive to get here. Uh, because of the dual carriageway, you can't just cross. You turn to another dual carriageway, but we made it through and it looks like we've got four chargers placed, all of them free, uh, not very busy. Uh, but at least now we are positioned the right way. Um, so I'm just going to park now here and let you know if all chargers are operational <laughs> or not. All right, so plugged in and charging now. Arrived here with 15% of battery, which was about 47 miles of range left. So very comfortably made it to Zadar. No need to stress at all. I covered over 262 miles. So combined with, you know, leftover range, I would have about 300 miles of range with today's efficiency, which was pretty good actually at 3.8 miles per kilowatt. And I regenerated already 11 kilowatts back into the battery. Uh, so the cost here in Croatia looks like a Toyota is uh, 33 cents per kilowatt, uh, which is less than Germany, but I think more than Belgium and Austria, but not by a whole lot. There are in total four charges here right now. Um, doesn't look like they have plans to add any more as in Austria, as I showed in Austria, but at least all four of them are operational. There's nobody here, uh, not probably very busy stop here, I would imagine. And as well, there are thing looks like there are about six Tesla chargers over there as well. Um, so obviously, if you do have a Tesla, you can charge it up there also. So definitely a nice spot here for electric car owners. Okay, so just finished charging now. So was here about half an hour and charged from 15 to 85 percent. Uh, you know, just have some snack, drink, and the car is charged up, ready to go. Well, one thing to note about this particular charging spot: there is no shade here. So now it's quite hot, 28 degrees, uh, but at least luckily, obviously, with electric cars, uh, you can have easily air condition on while you're sitting inside and charging. So the heat isn't really a problem and the lack of shade. All right, back on the road now, and let's continue the journey to Split. All right, so here we are just off motorway in Split. And yeah, the toll from Zadar to Split was 7 euros 40, I believe. So there we go. Done with tolls for today for motorways. So we only got one more course today, which is the ferry ticket, uh, which I purchased already online in advance anyways. Uh, let me concentrate on the driving now because yeah, traffic in Split sometimes can be a bit crazy. All right, so here we are. Uh, we made it uh, for the six o'clock ferry. It's 5.30 now. So I can just give you so far the travel update. So 
So yeah, uh, so far we made al almost 350 miles. The efficiency slightly dropped to 3.7 miles per kilowatt now. Uh, so I just, I just checked the ferry for a car is uh, 25 euros and obviously two adults, six euros each. So total is 37 euros, a uh, one-way trip from Split to Island of Brach. If you are in Croatia using ferries or catamarans uh, from Yadrolinia, definitely go on their website. You buy a ticket, you get it on the phone, so that they scan uh, the barcode on the phone, or um, you can print it out if you want. Either way, they just scan the barcode and you're through. So very quick, easy, and convenient way of uh, getting a ticket ahead of your journey. And here we go, officially with all four wheels on Island of Brach. So yeah, let's get this thing done. Journey, journey is almost complete, guys. Almost there. All right, guys, just arriving to Ball now. Final destination of this road trip. Uh, so it's been eight hour journey today, part three to finally get here. We've got some olive trees here to the right of the road, view on the sea, straight up ahead, and then lots of apartment buildings. All right, here we go. Uh, now I'm gonna turn somewhere here, right? So just down. Uh, just to the right here is actually public charger uh, that I could use if I decide to. But I'll see uh, with the owner of the apartment where I'm staying if I can charge. All right, guys, this is it. Uh, it's going to be narrow, a bit claustrophobic, but hopefully we'll get there in one piece. Uh, that's it. And there we go. We re regenerated even more battery. I was down to 44 and now I'm coming here with 47 because last 10 kilometers was all downhill. Um, so I actually got 3% of battery back. <laughs> oh, lovely. All right, almost there. Almost there. Oof, this is getting more and more narrow, guys. More and more narrow, but. Okay, so the gate is open, so I can just turn in. Uh, luckily, the gate here is uh, quite wide, so I should not have problems coming in. And here we are. Okay, so finally all parked up. Uh, just to give you final figures uh, for today's journey. So in total I did 371 miles and in the end the average was 3.6 miles per kilowatt. So it dropped slightly uh, as expected because obviously here on Island of Bridge. 
uh, especially going up with lots of like twisty roads and stuff. Uh, but as you see, like it was really funny. Uh, the battery was already on 44% when I kind of reached the peak of Island of Brudge. And then for the last 10 kilometers, I was going downhill and the battery regenerated from 44 back to 47%. So it really shows like how electric cars actually uh, are pretty good when it comes to, you know, going over the hills because you go up and then you get some energy back. So they're quite efficient from that point of view. And speaking of uh, regenerating, I regenerated 20 kilowatts uh, today. So basically, again, about a quarter of the battery came back into the car today, which is pretty, pretty cool. All right, guys, hope you enjoy this uh, free part series of my road trip. Um, now I will do a separate video, like part four, if you will, or a bonus part, uh, where, I, where I will go more into detailed breakdown of the cost of the entire journey, not just uh, in terms of charging. Uh, and as well, I will then uh, compare it to diesel petrol cars. And as well, for fun, I will throw in uh, the aeroplane journey because last uh, year I didn't go by car. I went, we went by aeroplane, by flights here. So I have a good comparison of, you know, how much it costs car uh, versus traveling by aeroplane. Uh, now, actually, the owner here was quite nice. I uh, asked him if I can just plug in here in the garage and charge uh, slowly like I did with my parents, you know, two kilowatts or something. And he was, yeah, fine, just plug in, no worries. Uh, so again, I'll be able to charge uh, the car back up for free, up to 100% on the way back. In terms of today, because I charged for free at my parents' house, I only paid 19 euros uh, in Zadar at the only station. So 19 euros for a 371 mile journey, I think is really really good obviously if i compare that to a diesel car that i used to have it would cost me about 50 euros and then in a petrol car about 70 euros so again very a lot cheaper coming with electric car especially if you can charge for free somewhere but even if not obviously using uh, ionity charger because i do have ionity plus subscription including with the car is very very affordable Again, hope you enjoyed this series and hopefully I'll see you in part four where I really do more a detailed breakdown for those of you that are interested and compare obviously this like for like versus diesel, petrol and even airplane journey. Hopefully you'll see you then, but until then have fun guys and enjoy your life.